Hello, welcome to Ra El Bull. I'm a professional astrologer and holistic wellness practitioner. Thank you so much for choosing to spend these precious minutes of your time with me today. This is the monthly electional astrology overview for January 2024. I'm your host and guide, Ephemeral. If you're familiar with the format for these monthly videos, you may wish to skip the introductory material and move to the analysis section or the conclusion section, best days recommendations. On the other hand, if this is your first time with my monthly electional astrology reports, let's quickly cover some of the basics. So to start, let's get a basic definition. What is electional astrology? Electional astrology tells us when to take action and when not to take action for important events in our lives. The thing you're trying to plan for, I'll refer to as the race, which is Latin for thing. The race could exist in the business, career, and financial areas, or it could be a personal matter. If it's the former, it might mean signing an important contract, launching a new product or service, forming a new company or a partnership, engaging in a merger or business combination, or any kind of important financial undertaking. If it exists within the personal sectors, it might mean planning for a trip, journey, or voyage, or it might mean actually leaving for a trip, journey, or a voyage. It might mean planning or executing on a creative project in the spiritual areas. It could mean a spiritual event or a ceremony or expedition, uh, such as a vision quest. If we're talking about a family race, it might mean a family reunion, uh, any kind of big family gathering or party. In terms of social matters, it could mean major social events such as galas and banquets. In the romance and relationships areas, it could mean getting engaged, making a proposal to get married, or actually having a marriage ceremony, uh, or a ceremony to renew vows. Any or all of those things are typical of the sorts of events or undertakings that we might wish to plan for. I've created a calendar for these monthly videos, which is free for you to access. You simply need to have Google Calendar installed on your device and subscribe to my website. The link for the Raw Elbow site is below. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to support this channel. I'm so grateful to you for your thoughtful assistance. This month has three favorable periods for us to discuss. The first one is January 13 through the 15th. The Pisces moon is in her waxing crescent phase during this period. Let's look at four key transits. First, Mars and Capricorn trines Jupiter on the 12th. Mars is exalted in Capricorn, and when he trines powerhouse Jupiter, he's a rocket, especially in the Martian field, athletics, law enforcement, the military, and the Martian dynamics, assertion, ambition, aggression, vitality. This is like the military commander who rises at 3.30 in the morning to shower, shave, and issue his orders before breakfast. It's a highly favorable aspect for many kinds of businesses and undertakings, especially those related to the Martian matters and qualities or the Taurian world activities and qualities, love, beauty, design, fashion, agriculture, food, flowers, luxury goods, and money. Second, Mercury enters Capricorn on the 13th. The day after the Mars trine, the god of thought, communication, and mobility enters Capricorn, a sign in which he is very well supported. So this is an excellent planetary transit for activities that are heavily communication or thought-oriented, especially those with Capricorn qualities or resonances, such as discipline, rulemaking, timekeeping, constraints, and the fields of politics, government, institutions, administrations, and banking. Third, Venus in Sagittarius trines the North Node on the 14th. On that day, Venus in Sagittarius makes a beautiful angle to the North Node, situated not far from Chiron in Aries. Venus is the ruler of Taurus. It's a wonderful trine angle, and an angle like this further amplifies the support of 
Taurian matters and dynamics. Fourth, the sun forms a harmonious sextile with Neptune in Pisces on the 15th. This lends a quality of illuminating spirituality and energizes our creativity and imagination. Neptune may also exert its compassionate and Unitarian and spiritual qualities upon Capricorn matters and fields. So this is a wonderful aspect for infusing a compassionate and humanitarian vibration into the Saturnian spheres, which are otherwise quite impersonal and austere. For, for example, selling financial products or money management services to the elderly or disabled persons, or philosophical, philanthropical, or spiritual institutions. As I said, the moon is in Pisces during this waxing crescent moon transit. And the moon is nothing if not spiritual and mystical and dreamlike when she's in Pisces. So this is an extraordinary electional lunar sign transit for businesses or projects that are heavily spiritual, especially those that are strongly Capricorn or Taurian in nature, or which rely heavily on beauty, design, and creativity. The second favorable lunar sign transit is on January 18th through the 20th. However, we should avoid the 18th for an electional race because the moon is at its first quarter phase on that day. The 19th and 20th are quite favorable because the moon is in Taurus where she's in her exaltation. And around the 19th through the 20th is the starting of her waxing gibbous phase. So let's look at the surrounding transits and aspects. To start, Mercury in Capricorn sextile Saturn on the 18th and Mercury trines Jupiter the following day. Both are wonderful transits for communication, thinking, writing, speaking, social media, web publishing, etc. The 20th is a massive astrological phenomenon, easily one of the top three most powerful days of the year. In my January general astrology series, I call this a plutonic energetic barrage, and I dedicated all of part three of that series to that single day. On this day, the 20th, we have Capricorn Mars trining Lilith, Pluto entering Aquarius, the Sun conjunct Pluto, Venus in Sagittarius conjunct the galactic center, the Sun entering Aquarius with Pluto, and Mercury in Capricorn exiting the retrograde shadow zone. Before we dive into, the, into those, let's talk about the Moon in Taurus, where, as I said, she's exalted, capable of her highest, mo most beautiful, and most powerful expression. Taurus is physical, sensual, sensorial, luxurious, and peaceful. Our emotions about comfort, satisfaction, pleasure, and aesthetics are optimized during this transit, and our emotional body is grounded and in harmony with the natural world. Our personal values, including money and possessions, are in focus. Our sense of self-worth and our appreciation for our long-term wellness are present with us. The Mercury positive angles to Saturn and Jupiter are very strong boosters of our communication and thought. So as I said, writing, publishing, and speaking are fortified. Again, we're talking about the intersection of Capricorn and Taurus. We need to therefore analyze our electional race in terms of how it occupies the fields and qualities I described a few minutes ago. When we look at the Plutonic energetic barrage with its epicenter at zero degrees Aquarius, assisted by the love goddess meeting with the galactic center, a few observations can be made. Pluto's entering Aquarius speaks to a shift from old paradigms and power structures and traditions towards the futuristic, the novel, and the decentralized in favor of equal access and popular control. Coupled with his solar Kazemi, we can expect a supercharged revolutionary capacity, especially for shining the light of truth, joy, and optimism into the covert and occluded shadow domains within the collective and the realms of invention, technology, and the common good. Next, Venus conjunct the galactic center occurs about every seven and a half months. 
It's coinciding with Pluto's Cassini entrance into Aquarius is remarkable, however, and her transit there on that day speaks to a new wisdom or cosmic awareness about what we value, find beautiful, and how we understand and experience pleasure and love. Forward-looking undertakings and projects that have undertones or explicit objectives relating to the community or social media, or which strongly blend spirituality with beauty and love, are favored by this transit. Even better, the Earth trine between our highly energized Mars and creative expressive Lilith can add some panache and mysterious allure to what we're creating. Last, this day sees the endpoint of Mercury's mystical 22-7 Mercury retrograde cycle I first spoke about in December and further discussed in various parts of this month's general astrology series. On this day, the 20th, Mercury is flying with optimal efficiency, promoting communication, thinking, and mobility for at least another six weeks before he enters the next retrograde pre-shadow. Finally, this Taurus transit has one caveat. On the day before Venus conjuncts the galactic center, she squares Neptune. This means we should use caution in our judgments relating to love, beauty, fashion, design, food, luxury goods, and money. A hard aspect with, ne with Neptune has the capacity for illusion, delusion, and making us vulnerable to rose-colored lenses decision-making. The third favorable lunar sign transit this month is the 22nd through the 24th. This Cancer moon transit is waxing gibbous, leading up to the super potent Leo full moon on the 25th and six days of astro spectacle featuring a Saturn in Pisces grand earth trine kite and a high voltage cluster of Mercury, Mars, North Node and Uranus aspects. All of those I discussed extensively in part five of the January general astrology series. The Cancer Moon transit, which precedes that package of energies, is intuitive, sensitive, empathic, and nurturing. Our needs, self-care, and unconscious selves take the center stage during these transits, as well as our childhood, our home life, and our ancestry. Astrological races that have those qualities and vibrations are favored, child care or elder care businesses or services, psychotherapy and counseling, shelter and housing related businesses, et cetera. And also services that provide genealogy or ancestry information. In the middle of this period on the 23rd, our Capricorn Mercury trines Black Moon Lilith in Virgo. This suggests excellent thought and communication relating to our internal traumas and wounding, so it strongly favors therapy. Also on that day, Venus enters Capricorn. Until the 28th, she's in essential dignity in Capricorn, so she's pragmatic, grounded, future-looking, responsible, and generally well-supported, which favors money and aesthetic matters. The sun and moon are squaring Jupiter on the 25th, so that could create tension in our desires and needs relative to our expansion, opportunity, and optimism. It could also mean we have inflated or excessive needs or desires. Altogether, industries and services I described above, domestic, counseling, ancestry, are very well served, served by both Mercury and Venus during this transit, but I'd restrict an electional astrology race to the 22nd to avoid the Jupiter full moon square on the 25th. To really make informed electional astrology decisions, you should know where these astrological transits and influences fall within your natal chart, including which houses they fall in. I'll say more about that in a minute. But in general terms, here are my three best days recommendations for January 2024. Number one, the 13th. It sits in the middle of Mars and Venus trines, features a Pisces moon and a solar trine to Neptune. This is beautiful astro medicine for so many businesses, especially where aesthetics or spirituality are key. Number two, the 20th. This is an ultra-magical wear and transformational astrological configuration, which features a Taurus moon, 
It's ideal for technology and game changer or revolutionary products, services, and projects, as well as spiritual endeavors. Number three, the 22nd. This waxing gibbous cancer moon transit is excellent for domestic, counseling, home-related, and ancestral products, services, and projects, and it features a strong, loving, and responsible Venus. If you need to know how to discover where your houses fall within your natal chart, you can visit any search engine site and type free natal astrology chart. You'll have to key in your birthday and time, if you know it, and your place of birth. I recommend choosing the Placidus or whole sign house system. If given a choice, I'd start with tropical Western astrology rather than Vedic or sidereal. Or you can visit my site listed in the description below if you'd like your chart prepared by a professional astrologer. This video has provided some broad and generalized advice for creating an electional chart for January 2024. If you'd like customized and focused advice about your particular event or undertaking, which will include a preparation and comparison of your natal chart with the electional charts, contact me using information below and you can place an order on my site. In addition to natal chart and electional chart services, I also provide Sophianic spirituality, higher self activations, and general consultations for spirituality, health and wellness, and career. You can also schedule a time for one-to-one -one consultation with me directly on my site. Last but not least, if you're interested in participating in a Sophia Circle journey, I'm a certified Sophia Circle journey leader who conducts both live in the Los Angeles area and online virtual circles. Instructions for joining can be found on my site on the services page. Thank you again for spending your time with me today. Ra L.